Oh, I love these episodes, and I think you'll love this one, too. We have Z, Z Train. That's right. Host of Zona's Awesome Fishing Show, Past Master Color Commentator, and my buddy, Mark Zona, joins me this week on... I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Well, here we go again. This is your reminder that, yes, it is Wednesday again, and yes, this show is back in your life. Welcome one, welcome all. Friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks, you're all welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. I hope you're all having a great week, and I don't know if it's just me, but the summer is freaking flying past. Uh, this, hard to believe, this will be our last podcast in July. I mean, next week's podcast will be August. And it, literally, it's just like, doo, 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 doo. How, come, how come February seems to just last forever? But July is like, gone. But I hope you're all having a great summer. Hope you're taking advantage of some of the great weather. Hope the weather's great where you are. Some people are actually having their summer, which is actually winter, which that is all of my friends who live in the deep south. And uh, it is sweltering hot there right now and um, uncomfortable. So they kind of are living the same existence. We live in the middle of the winter, uh, which is indoors. So wherever you're watching, I thank you for that. Some of those southern friends of mine are going to get a bit of repeat, re re reprieve from all of that this week. Why? Well, because the Bassmaster Elite Series is back in your life as well. I, um, As you're watching this, if you're watching it on Wednesday, I am currently on my way or already in Detroit, Michigan for the seventh stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series on Lake St. Clair. I hope to see a bunch of you there. It's, um, it's going to be a fun last three events. I mean, you look at that Angler of the Year race, you look at the rookie of the year race. I mean, it, it, uh, who knows who's going to win Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year or Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year. But there's a lot of cats that still have an opportunity. And you're going to see a lot of changes, I think, over the next you know, three events. I mean, just, just imagine what the standings were three events ago. Well, that's exactly how much it can change. Except we're going somewhere where some people do very, very good and others do not do so good. Um, but I would say this, you know, it's not a traditional northern swing where it's all smallmouth. I mean, obviously, Lake St. Clair going to be one with smallmouth bass. I mean, you could fish for largemouth bass there. We're going to be one with smallmouth bass. Then we're going to go to Lake Champlain in a few weeks. You can fish from both sides of the boat there. I mean, largemouth, smallmouth, you you can, you know, you go left, you're smally fishing. You go right, you're probably going a long way down to Ticonderoga and doing some largemouth fishing and all sorts of stuff in between there. Uh, so many stories in that event, but that's what I'm saying. It's not a traditional kind of you got to be a smallmouth fisherman. And even on Lake St. Clair, I mean, we've seen in the past for a smallmouth fishery, you can fish very large mess, large mouth esque. I better get better at talking before this event starts, but you can fish power fish a lot more. You know, you catch a lot of fish on blades there, uh, a lot of fish and jerk baits, stuff like that. Like, there will be a lot of things in play. Um, I'm going to tell you, one of the biggest players going to be forward facing sonar. I mean, it is a featureless lake, and um, that's going to be a big player. Literally, last time we were there, not everybody in the field had it. And if you looked at our top 50, everyone that made the cut, it was almost, there were very few exceptions in that cut that did not have it. Uh, I mean, our tournament winner literally won the event with his rod over his shoulder for half fit because he was scanning that much. So we're going to see some scanning. If you don't like that, we might see some other stuff, but if you don't like that, don't worry. But we're, we're it, it's just one event. I mean, dude, here's what I don't get. Why do people hate it so much? I, I just, and I get it. It is boring to watch. It is different. Um, but it also is incredible at, at telling us part of the story that we've never had access to. And um, that's my whole thought on it. You know, I, I'll be honest, there's, there's some negatives for, for me, but, you know, we're watching as a spectator and that sort of thing. But, man, I want to know as much as I can about the fish. And it definitely 
shows you that. And um, it's going to be a big player, not just in this final, of, in, in this next event, but in the final three events, you're going to imagine it'll be a big player. So um, that'll be interesting. I mean, that gets people wound up one way or another. We love it or hate it, that gets people wound up. But I'll tell you what I'm wound up about. I'm wound up about working with Zona this week. That's right. Davey Height's going to be in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'll always miss hanging with Davey, but he's going to be in the studio. And Z-Train rolling up the road to Lake St. Clair, and we're going to be working side by side. And yes, we work together all the time, but it's been a long time since we've actually like stood side by side and um, covered an event together. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, Zona is... Not just an incredible friend of mine, not just the reason that I have the job that I have, but he's also the best to do it. I, I mean, I say it about him and Tommy all the time. You put him and Tommy, in my opinion, they are the greatest commentators we've ever had in the history of this sport. Greatest commentating tandem. And it, there's a lot of great ones. But if you watch and watch what they've done, I mean, they had to figure out how to do live together. I mean, they went from doing a one-hour show that was shot in blocks to eight hours of live. And, and I've said it many times. I mean, I don't just think that they're great commentators for fishing. I'd love to listen to Tommy and Zona do a Monday night football game. Uh, I'd love to listen to them do a hockey game. You know, I'd love to listen to them do the Masters. I just think they're that talented. They have that incredible balance of chemistry together, but they're also so on point. You know, Tommy is just so dialed in. He's the best there is. I mean, you, I do this for a living, and I sit and I watch him routinely, and I'm like, how does he do that? I mean, the producer says I need a 29-second bump. It is 29 seconds. I mean, it's amazing what he does. But him and Zona have an incredible chemistry in the way that they can get the information but they make it entertaining and they make it educational. It, it really is, in my opinion, it's, it, they give everything that you need in broadcasters. Well, we're going to screw that all up this week. We're going to pull Sona away from Tommy and uh, me and him are going to work together. So I, I hope to see a bunch of you out at the Detroit event. And, um, and I look forward to hanging out with Z there. But I don't have to wait that long because we're going to have him on here right now. And... Uh, He's going to talk about, he said he's going to talk about everything. So, without further ado, we go live to Sturgis, Michigan with the Z train, Mark Zona. Z, we are reunited and, and in a big way, not just, not just here on this shoddy podcast, but this week we're working together again at Lake St. Clair. Nah, don't sell yourself so short, Dave. <laughs> hey, this is podcast 120. You just told me. Uh, before we went live, number one, congratulations. Uh, that, you're very consistent. I have noticed that. You know I'm not much of a podcaster, but I, you, you've you gone that way with this whole thing. Well, I mean, I, I um, the rest you of my tried. life fall into a mess. The rest of my life fall into a mess, me. but I get these out every single week uh, for the most part. But uh, crazy times in the fishing world, Z. Yeah, you know, let's pull the curtain back. You basically, um, this is for all of your viewers here on the, on the Dave Mercer podcast. You said, what can, we, what can we talk about and what should we not talk about? I don't care. Whatever you want to talk about today, I'm all in. I don't think there's very many secrets of, of what, what's going on and what has gone on in this industry the past 60 days. Um, so, Dave, no holds barred, bud. Whatever you want to talk about. Okay, I'll just throw it out. There. What do you think the wackiest thing that's happened in the fishing industry in the last 60 days is? Oh, I would start with that. The Cayuga tournament was a that was that was something else. And and, and that's not a this is not a um, this is not a bass MLF thing. Um, that was a bad deal. It was a bad deal. Um, what, what happened there? Um, I, I've talked to a lot of I think you have too. I've talked to a lot of the anglers that were in that tournament. Um, and, and from, from a, from a more of a, a, a self-centered situation, I did, I, I felt sorry for the guys that were covering that tournament from Newell to, to JT, uh, Marty and the, the other fella, I, I've never met him, but that, that's a, that's a hard position because that's a, 
the, here, here's why I'm saying that. I, I don't know how many pro protests were in that tournament, but it was a, a record-breaking amount from what I've heard. <laughs> um, almost like a year-long amount of protests um, from, from what a couple of the anglers told me. And, and it, was a, it, it, was, it was the perfect storm of not good. Um, and, and where I'll leave it on this is... Dave, you know this. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of, not, not really kind of. Um, I, I've lived in this industry my entire life, and that was a bad deal. It was a, it was a bad deal all around. And um, I hope we never see it again. I hope we never see that again. But what I will say is, there was a lot of anglers I were in, me I was in meetings with many, many years ago that I don't work with anymore. And, and all I heard was integrity of the rules. Where are them guys at right now? I'm, ser I'm being serious. Where are those guys at? Um, that, that's, I guess that would be my only question. But uh, hopefully we never see that crap again because that's what it was. Yeah, it was a, a, a tough... Uh, I, why do you think we're seeing so much more... It just feels like whether you're talking about the gray and the rules or what, it just seems like more of it is out there in every turn. Is that really what's happening or is it and i'm not just talking about K K Yuga, i'm talking about all of the stuff that have dominated chat boards social media podcasts for the last few months why are we seeing so much more of that is that because people I don't have i don't i don't know i don't know maybe 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 people are able to get away with it um i i don't i, I can't answer that i don't why do we see more of that i don't know maybe because you can do it you know what I mean? There was there was one dude DQ'd in that tournament. I'm sorry, Mercer. You know that I I I watch every second of coverage of everything, even when I'm not working. Yeah. I watch all of our stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, I, I, I've always said this though. I, I've always said, and look, dude, I'm not a, an angel or a saint, but when it does come to this sport, I care about this thing. Um, I had a really I had a really big time angler during the departure, during the split, say, you don't, you don't, you're not a professional angler. You don't deserve to have an opinion on this. And I kind of, okay, but yet hang on. It is my job. <laughs> right? It's like, this is, this is how I take care of my family. And when this situation happened, that angler asked me my opinion. I said, well, you told me four years ago, I didn't deserve an opinion. And I said, just so you know, you were wrong then and you're wrong now, because all of us fans, all of us that work in this, the anglers that fish in this, everybody that follows this deserves to have an opinion when something's not right, when something's wrong. And, and I don't know, man, the last 12 months, there's a lot, there's a lot to me, it appears there's a lot more wrong going on than there is right. And I hope, you know, it, it, I'm talking in circles right now and I apologize, but the main thing, I hope this sport gets to long, shortly after I'm gone or we're done is I hope there is transparency, transparency, sorry, I, I struggle with words, is <laughs> I hope, I hope there is, when there is an infraction that it is crystal clear to the anglers. It is crystal crystal clear to the fans. Look, man, every sport that's a sport, you know when there is an infraction of why and what the recourse was. I, I hope our sport can get to that because I'm really not sure to this day why it's not. I have no idea. I don't understand that. Um, that's where I sit on that. I hope one day we can get to the point where everybody knows why and how things are handled when it comes look man pe people break rules in every single sport your favorite sport my favorite sport nfl outside of bass fishing at least you know why there's a suspension or why there's a 15 yard penalty there's no well uh, we penalize that person we're not gonna get into why I, I i hope one day it gets to that i i really do so there you go on that it's How very do you weird. feel? How do you feel? Well, about that that what you topic you talked specifically about it not being public. I, that has always driven me crazy. And I've you know I I do the 
the call show that me and Panger do together every week. We haven't done it for the last few weeks, but we'll be back soon before you know it, once he's done fishing. Um, but we actually did a thing where I'm like, everything needs to be crystal clear. Whether And I don't care if you didn't wear your life jacket near a dam and self-reported yourself in pre-fishing, you've got 30 minutes in the penalty box. Or if you fail to polygraph from every level, I think that it should be. I, I, and I, I'm just like you. Like when people say to me, why why doesn't that happen in fishing? I, I have no answer. I have really no answer why we don't hear more about it other than the fact that what makes fishing different than anything else, whether it's bass or MLF, is the league is also the TV production is also the, you know what I mean? It, it's in the NFL, you've got Fox reporting, you've got the networks reporting, and you have the NFL doing their job. It's all under one umbrella in fishing, and it has to be because, I mean, just be honest, Fox isn't going to start producing fishing. <laughs> but, but And really, obviously, there's been a lot of division the last three or four years. But no matter what, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, even whether love each other, hate each other, we're, we're still in this. We're still in this together, no matter what. Um, from from the the BS with the walleye and the weights, um, I heard more about that. I, yeah. I actually I heard more about that than anything that's ever happened in my career. Of of I mean, even before television twenty years ago, I still worked in this industry. I heard more about the walleye thing, and I think that gave a black eye just to fish competitive fishing as a whole. And the other side is somebody said to me, "Well, you know." somebody that fishes bass made a comment they said well whatever happens outside of bass it really doesn't affect us and i and i call bs on that i don't agree with that i, I think i think all of it in a long short term or long term affects us imagine imagine we always talk about <laughs> moving the sport growing the sport and 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 that the, the most cliche used but i'm being dead serious i looked at that angler and i said i said imagine if you are a uh, a, a CEO of marketing for a non-endemic company, and you looked at our sport right now, and there's a lot of things that are fairly laughable, really, like Caddyshack level stuff, where you're like, I'm not touching this with, with a 10-foot pole. Um, I, I, that's where I do think we all get hurt um, in, in the long run a, as a whole. Um, so I hope, I, I do, I hope things get a, a little, little less Wild West uh outlaw crap and and we can kind of get back to 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 this being a professional sport which to me at least to me um that that's what i've all, always thought it was so yeah i mean that's a great point you think about it you know and, and you i think for people that when people say well if it's not happening at bass or if it's not happening where i'm particularly efficient doesn't affect us that's just the ostrich approach to life. You're just burying your head in the sand and saying, well, they're not talking about us. Well, they are, because when you go to said CEO, like you said, from a company that has nothing to do with fishing, that we all want to be involved in fishing, a gas company, a whatever company it is, a major company. The first thing they think of when they think of competitive fishing, if they don't think of it, the second they table competitive fishing to their marketing department, somebody's going to say, what? Like, like those walleye guys that were all over the like absolutely you're absolutely right and, and hey look the other the other side of this and i mean what i'm gonna say to you right now i mean this there are a lot of my friends that fit that fish mlf a lot of them close friends like like damn near family to me um i i want to see them successful i want to see them happy um, that, that's, that's a, been a, been a, um, a stretch lately. Um, hell, most of them are on my show and, and have been on my show and dude, I don't, I don't wish failure and, and loss of, of, of salaries and, and, and to, I, I don't wish that upon anybody. And I, I do, i I hope everything kind of gets just stable and 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 back to normal some way shape or form soon sooner rather than later i i do mean that how does it get better transparency and and you lay the hammer 
You yeah. lay the hammer down. You lay the freaking hammer down. Um, I, I, I mean this, what I'm going to say, Dave, and I've, I've thought about it. I've tried to put myself in JT spot or, or Newell. Um, I, you know me. You know me. I'd have got up and walked out. I'd have said, screw this. I ain't doing this. I'm not just not doing this. You know me. I would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I may have texted one of them. I'm like, God bless you right now, dude. Um, I, 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 that sucks. That sucks. And I, I just, as a whole, dude, I'm proud of this, this industry. I know your, your, your viewers, we bleed this man. And I, I'm not a, I'm not a, a forum guy, but the, but the folks that are on forums, they bleed this. They care so much. Yeah. They they care. There there's so much passion, um, and and I I have that. You have that, um, and it bothers me, man. It just it bothers me when when there there is not legitimacy or or it it, it just does. It does. Uh, it <laughs> I wasn't even involved in that, and it pissed me off. Um, just because you don't want to see that happen in in what we do and what and what we love. And again, that's not, a, I'm not doing this as a, this is not a slam. It is not that. I, I, I want everything um, to be on the up and up, period. How did, to bring it back to Bass, because it's not a slam. And I don't even know if you, you can or wish to. How did you deal with the Poche situation? Because that was always, I mean, I, I dealt with it the way I dealt with it on stage very publicly. <laughs> Um, he wanted to, he wanted to talk to, to a little bit with, you know, I'm so, so when an angler's in, so pull the curtain back for, for the viewers, when an angler's in the top 10 or the top six, whatever we've got, as far as cameras going to the next day, I make my television. Look, my, my job, my job, I am not Lisa Talmadge. I am not trip welding. I, I stay in my own lane at work. Um, sometimes I float out of my lane and I try <laughs> I try, you know, we both try, have a tendency try, to float. Yeah, I, 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 exactly. Um, but my, my, what my job is on Bassmaster Live is to fill in the holes of who, where, and how they caught them for the last 20 years. That, that's what my job is. Um, and you try to stay in those lanes. And, and he did. He actually appeared that he wanted to, to talk about it a, a little bit. In my exact words to Keith, I've always got along fine with Keith. Um, Keith never really did that well, his first go around at Bass. So I, I didn't have to deal with them that much. Um, but every time that, that I did have to have communication with Keith Poche, it was always, um, on the up and up, very professional and would give me the information that I, that I needed to pass on to the viewer, how you catching them, where you catching them, what, you know tell me what I can use and what I can't. And, and when I called Keith, I said, Hey, look, obviously I haven't talked to you in a long time. Um, but all I want to talk to you about is fishing. I don't want to talk about any crap. Um, and, and again, yeah, look, Keith Boucher started doing real good in tournaments when, when he, and look, Keith would admit this, Keith pushes, Keith pushes the limits and pushes the envelope of, of that, that gray line. And, and, and he does, he, he professes that everything he does is on the up and up. Um, my only problem, this is my only problem with jumping land. Okay. That even <laughs> sounds crazy coming out of my mouth. My, I don't care if Keith Poche thinks he is a professional boat driver. It takes one incident to hurt somebody, yep. to hurt a marshal. To hurt a cameraman it takes one incident, and then you know what it is? Wow, we should have cracked down on this a long time ago. You you hurt somebody, you kill somebody. Not now. There's a um, was it all worth it? I, I don't know what was it. Um, and he could say, "Well, dude, I, I, I'll never do that." Well, everybody says that until something happens. That is my only uh, fear of jumping the land <laughs> with, with a boat is you tip something over or somebody flies out and busts their skull and 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 god forbid something tragic happens um that's when look man on on the tiktok uh kids might think that's cool 
on the TikTok right now, kids think it's cool to jump out of a boat going 50 miles an hour. It's not cool, Dave. <laughs> it ain't cool. It's just not. I would wring my children's necks if I saw them do something like that. So that is the only thing when it when when it when it comes to Keith, uh, I, I would to say that to his face, and I, I I would hope he would respect my take on that, um, because to me that's that's a bigger picture situation with him. So. Yeah, and and I've I've said this before, but I'll say it again, just just so people know we're being totally. The Poche thing, the stuff that happened on the stage and everything, he called me before I made it back to my hotel that night to say, hey, <laughs> just so, so you know, it was <laughs> awkward. And I know you love awkward. So yeah. it was probably a good moment for you. But I <laughs> I was driving home and he called me right away to say, listen, that wasn't directed. I mean, I don't know who. I mean, I kind of know who it was directed towards. It was pretty obvious with that. But but hey, I'm pretty he, sure it was he did apologize. Obvious. For, for what he did to put me in that situation. So my relationship with Keith has always been pretty decent anyway. Like we've never had a, a falling out or anything like that. I have nothing against him. I actually think the whole aluminum boat thing is cool. I think the whole, but, but where I kind of draw the line is I think, and I'd love to know your opinion of this. We as a sport have to be responsible for some of the things that happen, meaning that, Maybe Keith will never get injured doing that his whole life. But Maybe. I know what I did when I was a kid. When I seen pros do stuff, I did the same thing when I was a kid. And kids are hey, going man. to see that Dave, and that, want to do that, that. That's on every topic that we've just talked about. Yeah. And I said, I said this to one of the biggest anglers in the history of fish. I said, um, I, is, this, is this what we're showing Obviously, high school and college fishing is very, very big right now. Is this what we're showing um, high school and college kids, that this is, this is the way to act on the water in a tournament? Really? Dave, really? Come on, man. Come on. And, and, and some of the crap that has gone on the last two years, I mean, Hackney was here this weekend. I said, dude, you do that stuff at a Wednesday night tournament in St. Joe County, Michigan, you are getting your ass kicked you are at a weigh-in if you if you cross the line on on stuff like that so we're gonna see that at the, at the highest level of fishing no that's bad that's not and, and 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 if somebody right now is disagreeing with me you obviously have not fished tournaments the last 30 years locally regionally because it's not tolerated it's not tolerated at the lowest level of fishing OK, so I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it should ever be tolerated at the highest levels to make a statement to the young kids that are coming up. Uh, you pr probably better not act like that in tournaments. <laughs> what do you to play devil's advocate? What do you say to the people that say, if you're not playing in the gray, if you're not pushing the limits, you're not trying hard enough. I mean, not just in our sport, but oh. in other sports, there's people that say that. I'm going to bring up names that they don't come near the gray. They don't come near the gray, dude, that have been some of the best anglers in, in the history of fishing. Um, they just don't. You could bring up so many different names. Um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to start swearing right now. I'll get so pissed off at this. But uh, I, I will. I, 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 um, there, there are so many anglers that have made – incredible careers never going near the gray there's two grays dave there's the unintentional oh i didn't have my kill switch on oh i i accidentally went on a body of water uh during an off limits i had no idea i turned myself in there's one side of the gray then there's a competitive advantage gray and you're seeing way more of a competitive advantage gray at least I'm seeing more than I've ever seen in my entire career where it's intentional to get a competitive, competitive advantage next to the, from the guy next to you. Um, and, and the other thing that I will say is, is there are, there are straight shooters, man. There are straight shooters that right now you just feel sorry for. You do. You just feel sorry for them. You're trying to do it the right way when you know there's, 
shifty things going on. Um, that that's a hollow that you want to talk about something that make you stay up at night. It would be if if I fish for a living, um, I, I that I would struggle with that the most. Do you ever regret not fishing for a living? I mean, you fish for a living, but, but I mean, you were a very competitive tournament angler. There's no doubt in me. We're going to St. Clair this week. If you're in the elite field tomorrow, a genie lands and says, Mark Zona is fishing this elite. Dude, I'm picking you in fantasy fishing. That's how competitive I think you are as an angler. Do you ever regret stepping away from the competition side of it? Oh, uh, no. In, 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 no. Because here's what's strange is in, 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 in 20 something years, there was only one tournament where I was like, dang it, I wish I was in that tournament. And it was a, it was a tournament in Buffalo. Um, I, you, heck, you, you've grown up fishing Buffalo. It's, I think it was like, that was the only, only one where I was on the water. I'm like, dang it, man, I'd catch him in this one right now. <laughs> um, um, the, but, but no. And, and the other thing is, is you, to me, you can't have it. You can't have it both ways. We just saw Jody White. Jody White's a good kid, man. He's a, he's a good kid that I, I sent Jody a message. I don't know Jody, you know, I, 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 Jody's done this a long time. And I remember, so I'm going to rewind time real quick. And the message that I sent Jody was, I, I said, um, and number one, hats off to him. He did a great job winning that tournament. He took down a dude. He's a, he took down a monster. Okay. Yeah. But, but the other side of it is Dave, when I started this, I, you and I've talked about this. I fished in open on Champlain my very first year when I worked with Kumar on Loudmouth Bass. Remember that? <laughs> that was the time. <laughs> I, I, actually, I texted Kumar a couple of weeks ago. I'm bouncing all over right now. I was like, boy, what a time to bring Loudmouth back back right now. <laughs> so, so anyway, <laughs> um, but I, I fished, I fished in open where I had a good tournament on Champlain. And you get wrapped up in the moment of trying to win the tournament, which I was very close to winning that tournament. And it was really strange. I, I was, I remember driving home and I called Karen and I said, this is my last tournament for as long as I'm in television. And as long as I'm covering professional anglers that are confiding information in me of not, not, ballpark locations exact locations exact lures exact patch of grass or exact rock that they're fishing i felt i felt it was a conflict of interest and and just an all-around bad look um and, and i and i did I, I i sent that message to jody and i said hey you know um number one i i said good job you, you did great but there are anglers that are going to look at you and for, from here, they, they will, sadly, they're going, it's just the way this game is. They're going to look at him and maybe not give him all the information that, that they would have. Um, th there is a, there is a trust there. There's got to be a trust between angler and knuckleheads like you and I that, that cover, and I don't anymore. I don't do on water coverage like I used to do. Um, but there's got to be that unwritten look. I had anglers this weekend text me about this topic and, and they said, dude, you, you, you'd get your ass kicked if you went and fished an open or went and fished a, a, a Toyota <laughs> series. And I said, yeah, more than likely by you. <laughs> um, but, and, and here's the thing did, 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 did did Jody do anything bad? No, no. It's more of an optics. Um, and the other thing is he probably just, he probably just created more headaches for himself than anybody else. So I guess, you know, to each his own. So you never regret not fishing tournaments anymore? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, like when this is all said and done, I've talked to Karen about this. I, 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 I may jump. Um, you know, I guess do what I did the last time when I used to fish is just jump tournaments that, that I like the body of the water. And it would be more of a, Hey, let's, you know, Karen, let's jump in the truck and, and, and go fish a tournament. No, but full circle. It's weird. I've made this, ex I've made this statement to you fishing a tournament after covering 
tournaments all season long, it's almost like an attorney going and sitting in a courthouse on a Saturday. You're like, oh my gosh, get me out of this place. Or you know what I'm saying? Um, but 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 the uh, my 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 show. You've been on my show many times. My show is my tournament. Yeah. Um, it, it 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 still gives me it's it still gives me that um we gotta catch them and and i do i it's funny i get the same anxiety i i did last week um taping the show i still get that same anxiety i still get that high i get that rush um from from taping shows so i guess that that has been without the show would, would i want to fish tournaments maybe again probably but the show fills that hole speaking of the show last week you you posted this was one of the most eye-opening zonas awesome fishing show shoots ever will you give me a little insider or is that just the biggest tease ever? it was a show it was a show you know you know some of the group that i run around with they're pretty pretty darn good fishermen and they're like it'd be best that you don't do that show <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other side was we we talked about doing it last year and and i've seen it now i've talked with a couple different fishermen i've seen it on multiple lakes it's it's widely known smallmouth they they will uh suspend over really deep water it's it's known it's out there um there, there is a phenomenon which forward-facing sonar mega live has has shown me it's just not smallmouth there is a massive massive if it's on the correct and I could go into this if it's on the correct type of lake. Don't get me wrong; it's not like it's 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 um, never been done because there's been there's been lakes like Lanier or, or or a lake like Table Rock or Bull Shoals where those big ones will suspend out over deep water. Hold on, here's the difference in this because I've watched it now on mega live i've watched what they do so if i'm out in 70 80 90 feet dave i caught two on the bottom last week in 70 to 80 feet and wow. and they're a large mount okay and here's what i've learned doing this they're there before they spawn and then they go back out there and do this but i watched them because the biggest question that i got whether it was on um when i posted that or just by like Hackney was talking to me about it. These fish don't get the bends. They don't, they're air bladder because here's why. I will watch pods of them. If I'm in 70 to 80 feet of water, I will watch pods of them and I'll put my hand up here at the top of my live, okay? And all of a sudden I'll watch them go all the way to the bottom immediately and then suspend. So when you catch one, his air bladder is acclimated to going horizontally in the water column. So you put them in the live well, they're perfect. You don't fizz them, they're fine. And here's what that's done. It's kind of shot holes. I said this on the show, it has taught us what we've read, what we've read, it's only part of the story the last 30, 40, 50 years, but what we're learning is filling in a lot of holes. I used to, I, I made a comment at the end of the show. You know the lake that, that I live on here. It's a deep, clear water lake. And I would always say to my father, and dude, I'm a boat docker, and all I want to do is boat dock and boat dock and boat dock. But the other side of my fishing throughout my lifetime is fishing very, very deep, which, which what I thought was deep. I always thought 25 to 40 feet of water is deep. It is so not deep. If you look at the length of two bass boats, it's actually my ceiling. It's not deep. Number one, the fish live out there. They thrive out there. And I would always say to my dad, we were big in the trolling when I was a kid. And I would always point, I'd go, they're all out there in the middle of the lake. You don't know nothing, Mark. They're not in the middle of the lake. You know what? Yes, they were. <laughs> they were there the whole time, Dave. And, and I said that on the show. And the other, the other thing is, I think we're just learning puzzle pieces of how a large mouth, don't get me wrong, this is not on every lake. But there are certain lakes that I've seen now, there's a connection of certain, you have to have certain variables, water clarity, forage, that they will use zero to 90 feet of water. 
and every inch in between. And it, 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 it's blown my mind. It's blown my, I was on, I was on this lake last summer. I took Taku there and one of my buddies, Vandy, who, who he's been at the forefront of a lot of this and he's blown a lot of tournaments away. I, I went there alone the next week. You'll love this. And I'm in the middle of the lake. I'm in like 110 feet of water. And this dude comes out in his bass boat and he's like, hey, man, I like your show. And I'm like, awesome, man. And I had a rod out. And I was just like, I was kneeling, playing with my grass. He's like, what are you doing out here? I said, oh, I'm just kind of tweaking on my grass. My rod goes, <laughs> and he's like, whoa, whoa. He's like, what do you got there, buddy? And it comes up and jumps. And it's a, it's a, it's a six pound largemouth. And dude, is just staring at me and he's like what's going on here like that's that's how i looked at it when 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 i learned this where you're like in full circle in full circle it's a lake that that i fished a lot of tournaments and we won a lot of tournaments and we would catch them out in 35 or 40 feet of water and you would always think to yourself i wonder if they live out there like i wonder if they're out there dude they were out there the whole entire time and what's funny is they swim with pike. They swim with salmon. They swim with lake trout. It's almost like they're confused. They just aimlessly are swimming out there. It's very bizarre, but it's also, um, you kind of roll everything you thought you knew up and you throw it out and you start over again. More driven by forage or driven by type of lake are, are equally as important? Equally as important. Equally as important. Um, but I'm seeing it again, take the smallmouth thing away because Van Dam and I have caught smallmouth out in 60 to 80 feet away. A lot of your viewers have done that. Now, those fish tend to have the bends. Um, they they kind of live at a certain and they don't they don't go up and down. What I've seen is there are just certain lakes where I, I'll watch them. Like last week, I watched six of them punching schools of bait in the bottom of of 80 feet of water and then i caught one and it was a large mouth it was that deep and then wow. i watched one of them one of them came all the way up to 50 and ate my bait and i watched the other two poo, go right to the bottom and you're like that's not everything i read it's not supposed to work this way but but it is it is that way and it, it's a show that um i i wanted to do it because it, it, to me, that's the that as of right now, that's the next frontier. And I know that there's a lot of really big name pros that are that are on to that as well. See, when you're talking about this, all that keeps going through my mind is this piece of technology that gets so much hate, forward facing sonar, and and, and I get that's that. what's I, cracking the code on all of the like. You're, I mean, you catch that six pounder. Number one, you probably don't, but if you did catch that six pounder randomly being out there before, you write it off as a fluke. Like you're not seeing totally. the, the all of this, the information you're getting isn't even the fish you're hooking. It's what those fish I, around it are doing. I Dave, I do. I I I do understand folks that hate it. Yeah. I understand folks that love it. Um, forward facing sonar is a lot like your fantasy football team and my fantasy football team. Generally, the only person that enjoys it is the person doing it. Nobody else cares, dog. But, but <laughs> what here, here's what I do. Uh, here's what I love about it. It is opening up things like I just talked about, um, where, where, where I am very addicted to it is I, I like to see how a fish reacts or does not react to the techniques that I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to give you a, for instance, is I was catching a lot of fish la last week on a, on a, on a jig head minnow. I was, I was catching them um, on a baby Z2, all of them, all of them. And I had tuned them up good. Okay. I, I had leaned on them and they started not reacting, whether they were suspended in 35, 45, 55, 65, over 80 or 90 feet of water. and and at about noon, they were done with me. They were not into what I was doing anymore, but we had a show in the can and I, now I wanted to mess with them. I'll never forget this. I took, I took a Nico rig worm and it was in 
79 feet. And generally, generally, the, the, the loners, the rogues are the biggest ones, okay? And I, I plinked this out and I had it on a quarter ounce tungsten head and I watched it, it's going down, going down, going down. It meets him and I watch him react and he follows it directly to the bottom in 79 feet and it goes, tunk, begging. And that's where you're like, I just got bit in 79 feet of water from a giant large mouth. I didn't know this happened, but it happened. And those are the things to me, and you know me, dude. You, you know I, I'm a tackled psychopath. I'm, 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 a, I'm a junkie <laughs> for it. Um, like it, it's literally what I was working on before this podcast. Right when we're done, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, even though I'm not fishing for like 10 days because of the elites, it's all I do is work on stuff. And those are the things that I am, I, I'm consumed with. And, and to pass that on to the viewer again, whether the, the viewer loves it or the viewer hates it, I hope that a viewer goes, dang, I didn't really know that. When I was talking to Hackney about it, you know him, dude, when I was talking to him, he was just staring at me. And that's when you know he didn't know that. He, he, he had never, you know what I mean? Um, and that's what forward-facing sonar has done. It's kind of, um, it's kind of really taught us we're not as good and we're not as smart as we think we are with that. As a competitor, do you think, I mean, I get what, and I agree with you, like the whole, I hate, it's not near as entertaining to watch for us, you know, watching the tournament. I, I find it in some ways not as entertaining because somebody's just focused on that, but I also feel there's a weird time in tournament. Like for tournament anglers, I almost feel a little bit sorry for them in the way that like you got people who are all about that. And then you got, it's like, there's that dude who's got his foot on the dock and his foot in the boat. You got a bunch of tournament anglers who that never works out good. The boat's going to pull away. And, and I feel like it's hard for them to figure out what you just figured out because I mean, Lake St. Clair, they're out there pre-fishing right now. You got two and a half, three days to pre-fish, two and a half really to pre-fish. Or do you have time to go and be in the middle of Huron and do what you're talking about? No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but no, no. Um, you got to, you know, with only two and a half days, unless you're a local with, you know, if you, if you have some Chad Pipkins experience um, to, you know, and you have proximity to where, you know, before cutoff, you could go out and really experiment. The problem is those fish were not in that zone yet or, or those, those, those wicked outer zones. Um, you kind of got to go with the way that tournaments look. Obviously, the MLF was there, you know, a couple of weeks ago. You almost use that. You no, know, not almost. You do. You use that as the template of what's going to happen um, on St. Clair, you know in the next couple of days, you use that as the template. There's obviously, there's some X factors for this tournament that probably have changed since two or three weeks ago, the North shore of Erie or the, or the St. Clair river. Um, th those should be a little bit bigger factors, but no, as an angler, you kind of have to go, especially with two and a half days, you have to go with the more of the safer play uh, for this tournament. All right, I want to talk to you about something completely different. It seems like the fishing world is on a quest to make up new names for fish and bass and techniques and all sorts of things. Social media has definitely made that. But one of the most hollowed names I think you came up with, which is Slaunch. And, and I mean, it's such a name that that there's companies who use Slaunch in their bait names, different names. But tell, can you tell me the history of Slaunch and how? That came to be a thing. Slaunch, uh, Slaunch was named after a very, very large man. Dave, you and I are big guys. We're big guys. <laughs> but I need you to, I'm going to try to paint this picture for you. And, and, and this gentleman has passed, but he was a very close friend of mine. And, and I was fishing a night tournament. And he, he used to, let me paint the picture for you. He would, he would smoke heaters more than, more than, Set fighter. I, he makes set fighter look like a child when it comes to some marble lights. Okay. <laughs> Cut off. Hold on. Let me paint it. Cut off flannel shirt, 
hair greased back, Fonzie style, yet orange, long. And one day I was out there and I was looking at him and, and God bless him. He was such a good friend of mine. And Chad Grigsby was in the boat and he's like, man, he's like, Bob's looking, Bob's, Bob is flowing tonight. He, he's kind of, <laughs> looks, you know, and, and, and I looked at him and I said, dude, he's a full blown slouch. And Chad looked at Chad Grigsby looked at me, goes bullseye. And, and he accepted the name. And we had a song for him, um, everything, everything. And I remember catching a bass uh, on my show and I, uh, years and years. I told Ben Milliken this story because he has had products named Slaunch. I said, can I tell you what Slaunch comes from? Just so you know, to respect the man behind the title. And he's like, <laughs> that is one of the most kick-ass stories I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, but, but uh, you know, Slaunch got up there in age and, and we lost him. Uh, right before the pandemic, but uh, I, he fit the name, he owned the name and accepted it. Uh, and, and, and that is exactly where that came. Well, all the other BS like Devil Kong, that Darva Conger. Darva Conger is a chick that was on um, To Marry a Millionaire. That was her actual name. But a big bass to me is a Darva Conger, man. What a great name. <laughs> um, somebody told me, this is this is no joke, Dave. Somebody told me, that knew her that they passed on the story that I have called Big Fish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there you go. What about Greaves? Where'd that come from? I, I can't stand them. Um, they have been a nemesis my entire life. The problem is any waterfall, anything with any winged animal to me is a grieve. Every single, I'm looking right now at Canadian geese they're a close cousin to the Grieve, which I don't think they actually are. Um, but a Grieve has naturally just come, it's come natural to say Grieve on anything when our cameramen, Jake Latondras, Brian Evie, when they're really bored in the back of the boat, they'll just get an aimless shot of waterfall for me uh, to run with Grieve. But you can't, you can't use it, you know, excessively. You need to do use it in, in the right um you know, it can't be a, a, a very critical moment where you just start yelling greaves out. You just can't do that. Uh, but what's funny is I'll be in the boat with I'll be in the boat with some of my my knucklehead hardcore fishing dudes and, and the, with them too. any any bird creature is a grieve now. <laughs> but there you go. It makes people really mad. Like it, it, it yeah. it's weird because, you know, being at the events. I'll we'll be playing live on the jumbotron and, and yeah. I'll be off talking to somebody and some guy will come up and he's like, you got to talk to Zona. You got to, you got, you got to call Zona. He just called a Luna grieve. It's not a, it's a Luna or it's a Northern. It Mer it's a whatever. You tell that guy it all fits, dude. It's live TV. Nothing is, is reality. Anyway, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I remember the one time we were having a really slow event. And I do. I try to stay in game. I, I don't remember what tournament it was, but it was it, it was a grind. It was it was it was grimy. It was really grimy, and I don't know where my head went. But it was during. I think it was during the pandemic, and I said, "Tommy, you've got to get killed by one of these: Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, or Jason uh, from Halloween." And it was funny. Like he never missed a beat. He was like Michael Myers. He just keeps coming. Z. He keeps coming. So like those kind of things, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to make sense, Dave. You know it. You say, a lot of people don't know. You say, no, a lot of people actually know this. You say complete nonsense oh, yeah. um, on stage. Complete mm -hmm. nonsense. One of the, it, it is one of the hardest jobs, not in fishing. It's one of the hardest jobs, period. Because if you really look at what a weigh-in is, it's a very bizarre phenomenon like I've sat there with Mike McKinnis watching you on stage. I'm like, a weigh-in is actually so strange, entertaining, but strange. And, but a lot of the folks watching this podcast, we used to be in your ear in the production truck when you first started, which you were the, you were the NFG, right? Uh, so we would recite things that we wanted you to say on stage. And I'll never forget this. We were giving you lines from Charlie Daniels, Devil Went Down to Georgia. But I didn't know. Right? 
I was just told I left the truck. Chicken before. in a bread pan, a picking outdoor. Okay. <laughs> so I'll never forget this. Todd Faircloth, very close friend of mine, gets on stage and you start screaming these one liners from the Charlie, from that song, from Devil Went Down to Georgia. And I'll never forget this. I'll never forget Faircloth going, <laughs> accepted it and walked right off the stage. Walked yeah. right off the stage. And I looked at Mike McKinnis. I'm like, that might have been the best moment, my favorite moment in the history of Bassmaster weigh-ins. <laughs> like, dude, um, that that was one of my favorite moments. Was when you did that fair club. Yeah, uh, James Nigmeyer, that same thing. I mean, I remember when I said to him, uh, and again, I didn't know what the, the bet was. It was for dinner, so there was a lot on the line. It was like yes. you got to respond with all these lines immediately after we give them to you. So, I mean. It, it made no sense at any point, but I remember James no. Nigmeyer took the hot seat and I said it, which the line kind of hit, hit it, have a seat in that chair right there with a shiny fiddle made of gold or whatever. And I, and I didn't even hear the lines right because it's loud and some of them were just mumbled, but it, it, it and if you would have heard the production trailer, when you stuck the landing on uh, like that one, I remember you doing that, this shiny <laughs> fiddle made of gold, son. And you said like the whole production trailer was cheering for you. Like it was like ah, <laughs> it's, so good. it's so odd. It's it's so like grieb, you know. Like when I tried to explain to that man, well, you got to understand, there's a long running joke. We just sound like idiots, which we are. But yes. but it yes. it is it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. We have a lot of fun. Three more events, dude. Who's going to be our angler of the year? Man, yeah, it's weird. I was looking at that. This morning, having coffee, it was 5 a.m. And I was looking at that to, to, to me right now. Say, take away what Kyle Welcher's done has been. Um, Kyle's an interesting, he's an interesting little fella. I mean, he's a, but it, it, the, the, well, what the do you mean by that? He, he, Kyle, Kyle, when he first started, I've to, I told you this, I told Ronnie this, he was very hard um, to cover. He's very hard to cover. Um, he's secretive and I don't blame him. He's, he was new to the elite series and, uh, you know, I pulled Kyle aside. This was when he took second, uh, at Hartwell to Christie. And I said, Hey, look, dude, um, you're going to be in this game a long time. You're, you're, you're real deal. And, um, I, I'm here to work with you, not against you. Tell me what you want, um, to talk about. Tell me what you don't want to talk about. Um, our group is not here to hurt you. Um, and you see that with a lot of new guys, and I get that. Uh, uh, but what I've what what's funny is he's one of those people that his style of fishing is very hard to make him. And I don't do the the fantasy fishing stuff, but he is um, he's a pinball. He's a pinball. And if you really watch the tournaments that that he tends to shine in. It's when he has 30 rods on his boat, very Brian New style, very Brian Thrift style uh, of, of fishing. And that's a hard angler to say he's going to do good here. Like the one place where I thought he was going to do good uh, is when we were at Seminole. I'm like, dude, this lake kind of sets up good for you. And he's like, it absolutely does not. And I'm like, I do not know you at all, dog. I do not know you. Um, but it seems the more random a tournament is, Gerald Swindle like um that that's when he tends to shine well i think a lot of our random tournaments are done um i think a lot of our hodgepodge events where you could do multiple things are done um we're gonna see how many how much chops he has on smallmouth you know the two names to me in the top 10 that stick out right now patrick walters has raised his game up uh smallmouth fishing wise he's definitely raised the bar Patrick plays with fire a lot um, and can burn himself, but he also has proven he, he has it with smallmouth. But Jay Shakur, it's sitting, I think he's in 10. Yeah. Um, dude, Jay, Jay's, uh, J to me, Jay's an, a total anomaly right now. Um, Jay has proven he's a stick. He is a stick with smallmouth. He's a stick with largemouth. And he's a stick on lakes where you're like, you probably are too young to do good there uh, coming from Wisconsin. But obviously having Sturgeon Bay in his backyard 
and the Mississippi River, which fishes obviously very southern, especially those pools. Um, I, I think Jay's still some way, shape or form going to be standing there at the end of this. So that looking at the race right now, uh, those are the two names, obviously outside of your leader that, that, that I'm looking at. Why do you think everybody's gotten so quiet? It seemed like the only two people we heard about or was Cobb and Cox who are second and third, but it seems like it's nobody's, gotten, nobody's talking about them all of a sudden. Yeah. Is that, is, is that a good thing or a Cobb, bad thing? Cobb told me, he said, he said, I need to stack as many points as I can before we get up to, towards your house. He goes, cause I, I, he goes, I've just been burned. I've just been burned. Um, Cox. That, that's a good question because Cox has proven he, dude, he can catch smallmouth and he can catch smallmouth and largemouth uh, lakes that we're going to. You know, it. it uh, I, I can't answer that. I guess I, I, I would need to apologize to Cox because he's he's proven he he can he can hold his own in in smallmouth tournaments. Um, I, I do look at that that last one is. Um, I think there's going to be some massive, massive runs in that tournament, which also lend themselves to a possible mechanical issue, which is always, it seems always at the end of the year in our, you know, this, when, when we have a Great Lakes event, that mechanical issue is all, always tends to um, be that little underlying storyline for that final tournament. And I think we're going to definitely see that because I think we're, we're going to see runs in that tournament that we have not seen before ever. Why? So what, why do you think you'll see runs? I mean, we're same spot last year. What, why will the runs be more this year? I think pressure. Is like pushing we're, we're, yeah, I think here, here's what, what I've seen. This is not what I've been told. Those fish are not, Dave, they were dumb as a box. My first Zona show, I think I taped a thousand islands. Those fish were so stupid. Um, they're not anymore. They're not. Um, the deep ones are not dumb. The shallow ones are not dumb. Um, and it seems from what I got to see, the further you ran, the dumber they got. Uh, and the bigger that they were, you know, the bigger they were, don't get me wrong. You could still get, uh, it seems like that mouth, obviously that mouth of the St. Lawrence um, just has a different caliber bass in it. Um, but they, they're not dumb anymore. And I think you're going to end up seeing, I think you're going to see some wicked, which I think that's cool as could be. I, I always love, I love that factor in the tournament just because I grew up doing that um, here. So. The big risk. And yeah. it, it'll be interesting, too, because if you look at, I mean, if we go into it with points similar to what we have now, then it's going to be that whole, like, uh, do the leaders stay conservative? Because in my history, watching that race go down, the second you try to be real conservative is the You're second done. they get you. you like it, Absolutely. Like, before takeoff, it seems like, wow, that really smart. You know, he's controlling himself. But yeah. like 15 minutes in the tournament, you're just like, it didn't. It, and you can yeah, catch them and still get really hurt in that event, too. We, we have learned, um, the, the, I can name certain anglers that, that have had leads going into the final tournament or really close to the lead that are, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to just try to catch me 18 to 19 pounds, and you get lapped by three or four people. And it seems... Um, it's very, it's very, it's very much our, our final events tend to be a, a little bit like a major golf event where you see the guys that are fourth, fifth, sixth, really gambling and the guys maybe above them playing it a little bit safer. And I think that's what makes the end of the year awesome on the elite series, because it, it, it tends to lend itself to guys that gamble you know the one person I, I i really give credit to is and i still call bs but when like polinick said i i don't look at points um but polinick polinick knows new he knows where he's at in a points race polinick is one of those anglers that tends to never lend himself 
to playing things safe in very, very critical moments. We've seen I can Ellie do that in years past to, to just throw caution to the wind. Aaron was a perfect example of never, um, really never playing it safe when it came to, to the final event or events of the season. Um, and, 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 and again, it tends to lend itself to the person that's going to hold that trophy. You really think Paul Nick is full of crap and he does and he, and he looks at me a break. He's a, Come on. He's a I, I honestly joke. believe him. I, I, I love Brandon, but I got news. Dude, he, two things. I think Brandon is one of the best professionals in this sport right now. I really do. Um, when he first started, it's weird. He would tell me things and I know he, you were very close to him. And I've told you this, there was some of the, when he started where I was like, he's, he's full of BS, man. Give me a break. Um, I did. I did. I totally told you that. I think at one time I, I told you, I thought he was overrated. I made uh -huh. that. We had a big I, argument. I really, he won totally angler of the year it. that year, that year he won <laughs> angler of the year. Yeah. I, I, I totally <laughs> nodded that one. Yeah. Nailed that one. Um, but Brandon and what, what's, what's been fun to watch with him, is when we talk about high school anglers and we talk about college anglers, dude, if you're a high school angler, you're a college angler, look at that guy. Yeah. Look at that guy on the water. Look at that guy off the water. Um, he, he, his moral compass is deadly spot on. I have a lot of respect for him. But uh, no, as far as that, look, here's the thing. He may not look at the points, but I look, man, Brandon Polinick runs with a posse. Like he has a, a uh, 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 crew around him. He, 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 he's a different level. Scott Martin, as far as the circus that goes out around Brandon Polinick with production folks and yeah, blah, the whole thing. So Brandon Polinick, trust me, knows where he's at in Angler of the Year race just from the people that are around him, just simply having his ears open. So he knows what's up. Um, but no, what I do respect about Brandon, he does not... Brandon doesn't play close to the vest. He goes for it. Yeah. Well, see, I, th I, I, I believe dude, I honestly, and since you've questioned it, I've really like tried to matlock the situation and sometimes really pay attention in social things. Dude, they don't say anything about it around him. And it's become such a, which dude, I'd rather hear than somebody say my biggest hatred is when somebody's leading anglers year and you try to talk to him about it or what, it, like he understands if he gets in the lead, he's going to, we're going to know yes. or whatever. But I hate when somebody's answer is, I, you know, I'm not even thinking about that right now. I, I of course Kyle they are. Welcher. I, I respect Kyle Welcher saying, Oh no, 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 no. I know I, I'm looking at it. I'm and, and you, Kyle Welcher is very into analytics yeah obviously coming from what he did before he's very into analytics um and and if if the times that i've questioned him he'll kind of get into his thought process on how he attacks a, a, a single event how he attacks a day a certain day um and, and he's very by the numbers and and i think kyle has been very refreshing that no hell he'll talk about it. yeah um and say no it's on my mind Hey, dude, if you're trying to win Angler of the Year, it better be on your mind. Yeah. I, I think. Um, I, I, I don't know. It's very, everybody's, everybody's different in their own way. But I'm like you. I like to hear somebody go, I'm paying attention to it. I really want to win it. And here's what I think I've got to do to win it. I, I do think these last three tournaments are going to be, I think there's going to be more shakeup in these last three tournaments than we have seen in years past in that top 20. I think we're, we're on the verge of seeing a major shakeup compared, compared to years past. Why? Just the names that are in there. I, I think some are going to excel. I think, I think you're going to see some, some catastrophic falls. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're going to see, see some pretty big rises. Yeah. With, with Paul Nick and Welcher, you know, it's for me, what stands out for me with them is it's not what they answer a question with it's the certainty they believe in their answer absolutely and th that to me is has always stood out as something kevin zach same like when kevin you ask kevin about somebody you'd be like no they're they're gonna do this like they, they he may not think be, anything they may else not be could happen they may not be right no they believe and, and there do there's a lot to that 
believing what you think is the only way to get from point A to point B, the best in this sport, that is how they act. No, that, that's the wrong way. This right here, this is the right. Dude, that is what has made the best bass fishermen ever in the world. Yeah. Knowing what, what in your mind, that having that confidence is what makes the best. Let's play weird science here. Rather than creating it. Kelly LeBlanc, let's uh, uh, Wyatt and what was it? Chet and Wyatt will be Chet. Or Chet was the brother. Chet Wyatt, was the brother. Yeah. Wyatt and um, what was the other guy's name? But regardless, Gary, Gary and White. How did I know you would get it? Of all, I can talk to anybody about any. I knew you'd be there to help me. Gary so and Gary Wyatt. and Wyatt, we're going to be and we're going to create the greatest tournament angler of all time. What traits do you need to put in that, in that pick four traits you need to put in that body? Um, you have, to, I'll start with what I think is the most important one. It's, just, it's the one that we just talked about to have the most superior confidence compared to the guy next to you. We have seen that in the best that have ever played this from, from Rick Lund to Kevin Van Dam to Aaron Martins to Greg Hackney's. Um, Larry Nixon's, you have to have superior confidence, period. Um, the, the other, to me, the other side, uh, the next trait, uh, and I always looked at this and I was very envious just because I fished with him so much. I thought Aaron Martins was, is, and always will be the most versatile fisherman that I've ever covered. And that's no offense to, you know, a, a four-time classic winner or somebody that's won, you know, nine angler of the years. But I think Aaron was, he was equally deadly, shallow with a flipping stick as he was in 45 feet of water with a drop shot. Um, the next trait, and this is more current, is to just be wicked with forward facing sonar. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think you can, you can go and And here's the, and here's why I say that is I don't think these days and times you can go through an entire season without having to lean on that to excel in certain events where we're going in the next day, you had better be darn good with that, or you're fixing to get all your teeth kicked in. Um, those would be the three uh, to be to be tech savvy, to be versatile and to be a rock. Because if you combine all of those right now, you're a pretty good fisherman. <laughs> yeah, you're going to you're going to do pretty good, Dave. Um, I think those are the three. Mo what, what do you think? I think that, that to be very and uh, this is a word that makes me sound drunk when I say it, cerebral, you know, to be that. Like, if you look at them all, and I always say the only one that stands out to me that has ever been a spaz, if you look at all the greats. I can Ellie. I can Ellie. I can Ellie's the only one. But I also think that if it, it works for him, it works for him. That's what gets him up. You know what I mean? And that's who he is. But but to, to be that Jay Shakurik, Jordan Lee, yeah. Br Brandon Polnick, too. Very, you know what I mean? Like, he yes. is able to stay. People like Flat me line. just. I mean, if I catch a five pounder at the beginning of the tournament, it might be the worst thing ever happened to me because I'm like, I'm going to win this one. Just need four more five pounders. And I just a spaz, but that flatliner trait seems to be Absolutely. so important. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's something that we obviously talked about through the years. Listen, man, I can Ellie, he does, he makes it work for him, but here's what I can tell you. And, and I, I don't even know that I've ever said this, but I've, I've fished with Mike a lot now and, and he's been a guest on the show. Brian Evie, my, my, our cameraman on Bassmaster and Zona Show, Brian Evie is a flatliner, correct? Yeah. He's a flatliner. Evie made this comment after being Iconelli's cameraman for my show. And when he's been his cameraman on Bassmaster, Evie made this comment. Wow. It is mentally exhausting to be with him for eight hours. And I can, and here's what's funny is Dave, Mike will admit 
in eight hours, there is going to be a series of highs and there is going to be a series of lows. <laughs> and they are both going to be catastrophically apart from each other. But they may actually, I mean, as far as the emotion that comes out, but this can all happen in a five minute span. I have seen it. Like I have seen him go from here, <laughs> taping a Zona show from here to here in a matter of two minutes. Yeah. And dude, you got to, you got to reel him back in. You got to kind of root him on. Hey, come on. We're in this together, bud. They're going to do this. I know. Like it's, it's phenomenal. It, it, he obviously makes for a great guest. Um, and, and he, Mike is always, he's been so fun to cover throughout all these years. Uh, and, and I do, I have a lot of respect because no matter what, he's a little bit like forward facing sonar. You either really, really love Mike or you really, <laughs> really don't. Uh, but I do, I think, I think Mike is um, throughout all, all of this, Mike has been one of the best things ever, ever in, in the sport of bass fishing. I know he got voted uh, into the Hall of Fame. And you, you talk about somebody that should walk right into the doors. I think Mike's Mike's one of those people. Yeah. D With him being the exception to the rule, do you think if he was able to be a little more mellow, he would have accomplished more or no? That the no, fire no, is what made him no. accomplish what he's accomplished. Dude, he's John McEnroe. He, yeah. he's, he's, he's John McEnroe. He's, um, it, it's hard to, it, it's weird. You know, you and I've called him for years. We called him happy Gilmore, dude, at the end of the movie, happy Gilmore won. um, that, uh, you know, a, a calm Iconelli, it doesn't work. I don't think it works for him. He feeds off of, he, no matter what, he may not, not agree with this. He feeds off of positive energy and he does feed off of negative energy. Um, as long as, you know, it's funny before he came back to bass, um, you could see he was not in a good place. You mm -hmm. could see he was not in a good place. And I called him and I, I think the world of Mike, I, I do. And, and, and you know, this Mike and but we, him and I have had very, very high highs and we've had very, very, well, one of us going to hurt somebody. And I got news. I'm bigger <laughs> than Mike. Okay. I'm, I'm bigger than Mike. I like my, anyway, um, <laughs> I landed, I landed in Detroit one day and, and I called him. It was after an event that he's in and, and I made the comment to him. Um, I said, Hey, be careful where you're at right now. Um, on camera. Um, cause Mike has a tendency. He can, he can, he can snap. And when he snaps, he is taking everybody with him in the ditch. And I told her, I, I said, dude, um, you and I are close. Just be careful right now and, and don't let you burn you. You've done too much in this sport. Don't let you burn you um, just because your, your, your temper goes haywire. <laughs> he goes, I really needed this phone call. I, I needed this. And, you know, and, and he knew exactly what I was saying. You know, um, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's just it's who he is. I've grown up with a lot of dudes like Mike Iconelli on the South side of Chicago. And, and, and they're, they're, they are some, they were, were some of my closest friends, but just don't let that wick burn too short. Just keep Dave. I have that problem every now and then. Keep, <laughs> keep, 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 keep the wheels tight on the axle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so yeah. what, what's the future for you? What do you think? Because I, I don't know about you, but I find myself in that same weird yeah. predicament. You know yeah. what I mean? Where where you just turned 50. I'm I'll be that later this year. You know, hard to freaking believe, number one. Um but, but what's left for you to to do and accomplish or I I man, I here here's what uh do you and and myself it has been as this has been a dream for for two idiots and i i don't use that term loosely i, I don't um this has been a dream but, but all the way back to the start of this podcast um i i i i am and always will be fishing the the, the, the professional fishing industry is our life it, it, it's our passion it's what we care about um but but with that being said 
you know, I've talked with you about this. I've talked to Mike McKinnis about this. My bigger, I think, no, not my bigger, but, but you know, where, where I devote a lot of time now, and it takes a lot of time to do this, is, is I love doing my content, whether it's on a show or, 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 you know, social and digital. And, and it, my passion um, is being on the water and fishing, which, duh, give me a break. Um, but I, I, I still do, I still do have that passion to cover uh, professional fishing. What, what that will look like a year from now, two years from now, um, if, if I can, and I've, I've told this to you, I, I've always wanted to kind of get the reins a little bit more uh, on my own schedule so, so I can uh, uh, do everything correctly or else I think something gives. Um, I would just say probably scaling back on certain things in the next two or three years, but still involved in it in some way, shape or form. That's how I, I see it looking. So, yeah. Sounds like a plan to me. I mean, I don't uh, know. By the end of these three tournaments, I might get fired. <laughs> who knows? Who right? knows? <laughs> it's been a long time since they let me and you like, dude, we're, we're literally like we work together all the time, but you're in a studio and, and, yes. but I mean, we're going I, to be. Davey Heights going to the studio this week and me and you are standing side by side at Lake St. Clair. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm pretty freaking excited. I'm really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it for well, number one. I, 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 I want to hang with the guys. I want to, I, I, there's a lot of anglers that I just want to, you know, even though we're covering the tournament, I, I'm 2,500 miles from them. Um, but going back to it, we used to go to every single tournament together and, um, you know, obviously through the pandemic and stuff and doing this stuff from Jacob's bedroom upstairs. Um, I'm looking forward. <laughs> so strange. Actually, pull the curtain back. It's no joke. So when 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 that all happened and I told you this, I, I live on a party lake. You you know, oh yeah. Is. <laughs> it is a party lake through the pandemic. So we would be doing Fox broadcasts upstairs, and the neighbors will have been playing beer pong and whatever it is those kids do all day with Hunter. And, well, anyway, like they would walk into the studio while we're live on Fox. Like, come on, dude, let's go. What time's commercial? And I'm like, get out of here. Like there was multiple times on Fox where I would hit my mute button, start yelling at people that have just walked in off of the beach. Lord knows what they have been doing the last two hours. Right. Um, but anyway, to 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 um, I, I I miss going to events, and I, I'm really really looking forward to uh, to hanging with everybody this week. It'll be a fun one. It'll be and it, it it it'll it'll be a great tournament. So it'll be a good week. Be a good week, and uh, it's one I'm definitely looking forward to because you're right. I mean, if I could, one of the hardest things for me at this job was was when you guys stopped coming to events. Like you I remember, I, but I remember yeah. I was like, well, so you guys are gonna be in the studio and i'm not <laughs> like we're never coming we would, back dave we would we're never, never do back. dinner or anything but it worked out and dude it, it's yeah i mean i always laugh with we've got a bunch of i call them the club kids there's a lot of young folks who now work for bass and you'll you'll meet all of them this week but the, i know zero of them well you're going to meet of all of them. them they are the club kids um because they they'll go to, they're not afraid to go to a club the night before a tournament um, and I'm not talking little club. I'm talking like a full on whistles and yeah, like freezies and full, as the kids call it a full banger. <laughs> yeah. Banger. Um, so, but I'll tell them all the time. Like they'll talk about bass live and I'm like, you guys have no idea. Like Tommy and Sony used to do hooked up and it was like right before way. And it was a 10 minute and they and we would, would practice bench. it twice. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 listen, there's two different things I want to say here real quick. I, um, when we did not come to tournaments anymore, I remember Mike McKinnis calling and he's like, I think Dave is really, really struggling with this, <laughs> that we don't come to tournaments anymore. And I was like, oh, the hell with him. He'll be fine. We don't need to go back anymore. But and that was one. <laughs> and the, the other. True he, friend, Dick. <laughs> um, I, I remember, I, 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 we, we, we've talked about this. So you're right we used to do this was before you came to bath tommy and i would do the 10 minute hooked up and i remember going to lunch it was 10 
minutes. And I remember going to lunch with Tommy. I'm like, this isn't right how we're being treated, man. And Tommy's like, <laughs> I know. And I remember him saying this. The next thing you know, it's going to be 30 minutes long, Z. <laughs> I, remember, I, re I remember him saying that. <laughs> Now we have like Olympic like hours. And, and what's, 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 um, what's interesting is um, it, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad the, the sport across the board from Bass to MLF I'm, I'm, to, to NPFL with, with, with Luke and, and Kat. Um, I'm glad, I'm, I really am. I'm, I'm glad that there's this much live coverage um, because in some way, shape or form um, it, it did. Uh, it did get bigger, and I remember Jerry wanting it to get to that kind of of, of content hours, and uh, it got there. Yeah, got there. and, and I, I take every opportunity I can to push this, and I know you do too. The industry has to be thankful. You mentioned Jerry McInnes, and Jerry wanted it to be bigger, but the guy who drove it to be bigger is Mike McInnes. That's the guy yes. who, you know what I mean? 100%. That kept pushing, kept saying, we need to figure out a way to do. And I remember, dude, that first classic that we, I mean, that, such a great way to launch things. Let's launch it at the Bassmaster Classic, the biggest event. But oh, I remember the night before us having dinner and being like, do you think it's really going to work? And then the next thing I knew, you, you guys, you know, I was driving home from takeoff and I remember freaking out because me and Carrie are like, I just saw a fish catch live. It's really, it's working. It's yeah. working. And ever since it started working, it's been pretty crazy. But, he, My, but Mike McKinnis changed not fast, but the entire it. industry. Yes. Yes. And, and it, it, it took bravery to do uh -huh. that because we all doubted things to him. Um, it, it took, but it also took, you know, really, it took superior confidence to do that. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have that confidence. I'm like, <laughs> this thing's going to set on fire tomorrow morning. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny looking back on it now. Um, and there, there is, there's a lot of folks that are, that are watching this podcast that you, you don't know the name, Mike McKinnis, but Mike McKinnis is, why live across every platform is what it is. Uh, he is, he is, he has been, and, and, and it's, it, it, uh, gosh, dang, man. I have, I have loved, I have loved the, the, the ride with that dude. He, he's been, he's been not a good boss. He's been the best, uh, to work with. An amazing crew. And, uh, dude, I thank you for, for making me part of it without you. Uh, I did, I've never be part of this. So um, I love you, dude. Let's try not to get fired this weekend. We're going to have a big time, Dave. And, and, and I mean this, you've done awesome. And hey, seriously, congrats on 120. Congrats on 120. It's worked out fantastic. Well, thank you. I will uh... love you, bud. I'll see you in a day. All right. Look forward to Mr. Paul's. Every night. <laughs> it's so terrible. That's so terrible. I, Dave, don't get mad at what I'm going to say to you right now. Okay. The last time I did go to a tournament, it was St. Clair, uh -huh. and I would watch the weigh-in from Mr. Paul's. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, I did, I, 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 I'm glad to know you were there because I just thought you were watching them in your room. I thought you were in your no. hotel. I'm like, anytime Mr. Nope. Paul's, they, they make the Caesar salad right beside you. It's a nice place. I'll see you this week. I love you, bud. Love you, too. I love that dude, and I love that conversation. I mean, it was literally the goal with this show is always to have a real and a honest conversation, and um, that was very real and very honest, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did, tune into Bass Live this week. There'll be a lot more of me and Z hammering on about whatever's going on on the body of water at the Avco Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair. Stop number seven of the 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. Who will win the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year title? Who will win the Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year? Well, all of these things will be answered in the next three events, but the first of those three is going down this Thursday to Sunday, and I hope to see you guys there. Oh, before I let you go, 
One other thing I got to talk to you about is the cull. Usually do the cull with Matt Pangrank, where, you know, we call it a sport fishing debate show. We debate different topics in the sport of fishing. And um, it has not been on the last three weeks, I believe. Usually post them every single Monday. The cull has not been called. Do not worry for all of those of you that me message me. It will be back. Pangers just traveling all over the place fishing right now. And I've been doing a lot of that myself. And we just had a hard time connecting. So we will get those going here again very, very soon. It's not gone away. I promise they'll be back in your life. And, and so will this show be back in your life next week, I guess. It's the week after an Elite Series event, so we'll be back with Jake's take next week. And um, all sorts of goodness coming with this show. I can't uh, thank you guys enough for making this show what it is. And it seems to grow each and every week. And that's not because of me. That's all because of you guys. And I thank you for that. Have a great week. Enjoy being. And as always, Bob Cobb, take it away. Thanks for watching. Please like comment and subscribe because bob cobb of the bass masters told you to you hear